Welcome back. 2024 Republican primary candidate Vivek Ramaswamy is trying to seize on some post-debate political momentum, rising to second place behind former President Trump in a new poll out of New Hampshire today. We'll break down those numbers in just a moment. But first, NBC's Dasha Burns traveled to Ramaswamy's Ohio campaign headquarters for an exclusive interview with a controversial candidate. He's a political newcomer rising in the polls. You have no foreign policy experience, and it shows. And you know what? The, it the shows. Foreign policy is Ahead of politicians with longer, stronger resumes. I'll be very frank about this. I am not surprised by our rise. The people in our Republican primary base, we're hungry for national unity, actually. I think it's a different philosophy of how to get there. His style and his politics drawing comparisons to another one-time political newcomer. President Trump, I believe, was the best president of the 21st century. Pumping out content that, like Trump, is often baseless and creates controversy. Recently calling Congresswoman Ayanna Presley a, quote, modern grand wizard of the modern KKK, saying the government lied about 9-11 and suggesting federal agents were involved in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. You know when you say stuff like that, you... I know it's like, going to be controversial. You know it's I know it's going to be controversial. So I think it is healthy for our country to have open, radically honest and candid conversations. You said at one point in one of your gaggles, and you're like, I, I just sometimes like say things off the cuff. I'm just honestly answering off the cuff. How much do you literally mean what you say? Because sometimes it feels like you just kind of like say things. None of us can have it always, right? You can't be radically candid and then also filter what you say when. And if I'm giving a serious speech about shutting down the administrative state, as we did recently, we intend to follow that through. In other cases, I also believe in moments of levity that are honest, that open up candid dialogue. I'm not saying things I don't mean, but that doesn't mean that that's a bedrock part of my policy agenda to drive forward either. Many of Ramaswamy's policy ideas are polarizing. He has proposed deporting the American-born children of undocumented immigrants along with their parents, children who are American citizens under the 14th Amendment. So I want to give you my full perspective on this issue because I will acknowledge this is a difficult question. And what makes this a difficult question is that many people who are in this country illegally, are still good people who came here for a better life for their family. And I think the only way we're going to be able to stand as a nation really committed to the rule of law is to behave in a manner that actually means it. But Humanly is this a cold possible. turkey rip? Like, is it people... It has to be. But I think that, okay. I think that, I think that we will provide a path back through legal meritocratic immigration for those who have demonstrated themselves to be law-abiding contributing citizens of but, this country. But to be clear, you're talking about people who only speak English, who have lived in the United States their entire lives, are now going back to Guatemala, Venezuela, to countries that they know nothing about. So they you are don't picking speak the, the exception rather than the norm in the hard case. But, but to be frank, no, but there are the thousands answer of these, yes. these people in the so, United States. So I, I think the right answer is we have to stand for the rule of law. Ramaswamy, whose parents are legal immigrants, it, himself gained citizenship by birthright. Did your father also take the citizenship test, and is your father a citizen? He did not, and that's a choice that he has made for familial reasons, but my mother did. So your father is not a citizen of the United States? He's not. Okay. And your mother, when did your mom take the citizenship test? Was it before or after you were born? After I was born. His wife, Apoorva, is also an immigrant and a throat surgeon at Ohio State University. The couple has two young boys. And not unlike some of his opponents, Apoorva initially questioned her husband's readiness. Is this the right time for our family? And then on a larger scale, are you the best version of yourself to be filling this, you know, extremely important office? We didn't see anyone. And that's when we realized that at some point you have to step up and do it yourself. But poll after poll shows former President Trump with a commanding lead in the Republican primary. A ton of the voters at your events say... They like you. They're, they're voting for Trump. I do think that I will be able to convince the America First base that I'm part of, that I'm best positioned to actually lead this nation forward. NBC News correspondent Dasha Burns joins me now. Fascinating conversation. Dasha, congratulations on a really great interview. 
Take us behind the scenes of the Ramaswamy campaign, because I think you really hit the nail on the head there, which is he is surging in the polls, and yet former President Trump still has this commanding lead. What are they saying about that? And realistically, do they think he has a shot? Well, it's interesting to look at those Trump comparisons because you even see and feel that at their campaign headquarters. You remember back in 2015 and 2016, Trump was such a non-traditional candidate. He really shook the media landscape and he found his own way to talk to voters directly and constantly through Twitter. Well, Vivek is doing his own version of that. You go to his he campaign headquarters, which is a former bar, and bar, by the way, and where there used to be horse stables. Now there's a podcast studio. There's a TV production studio where he's uh, producing a seemingly endless stream of content where he does spout some of those controversial comments that we talked about there. But that is his way of directly talking to those voters and really making his case. And that's how he's really starting to stand out. Unless like some of those other candidates that have maybe avoided the media in some ways, he's saying the more the merrier. Let's talk to everybody and let's do it kind of constantly, Kristen. Mm, it's really fascinating conversation, Dasha. I want to pivot a little bit because I know you've also been covering the abortion fight in Ohio. The state Supreme Court yeah. there recently handed a partial victory to Republicans on ballot language this week. Break down what the key takeaways are there. Yeah, and a bit of a blow to abortion rights advocates, the state Supreme Court said that the words unborn child can be used on the ballot in November. This is something that uh, Ohioans for reproductive freedoms were arguing against. They wanted to use the word fetus, which they believe is uh, the right language because it is the language actually used in the full text of the amendment. But the Supreme Court said it's fine. The words unborn child will be on the amendment. Uh, abortion rights advocates say this is potentially going to mislead voters. Uh, so a blow for, for those uh, abortion rights advocates. But Kristen, a political scientist that I talked to say, said that this may or may not have a, a huge impact because this is an issue where people are pretty entrenched. And you saw that pretty overwhelming uh, victory in that special election in August. It's a bit of a bellwether for what we might see in November. So uh, not necessarily a huge setback, but certainly not uh, what those abortion rights advocates were looking for here. And by the way, we did talk to Ramaswamy about his position on abortion. You can see the full interview and that exchange as well on NBCNews.com. Yeah, obviously continues to be front and center in the GOP primary race. And we know that both sides will be pouring a lot of money into that ballot measure fight in Ohio. Dasha Burns, thank you for covering all the angles for us. Appreciate it. Great to see you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.